The Mason-Dixon line. It's one of those things you might remember from history class or have spotted it on an episode of Jeopardy, but how much do you know about this important border? The legendary line represents much more than a simple division between territories. Yeah, attitudes, customs, and politics are all interwoven when it comes to the inception of this boundary. And joining us to shed some more light on all of this is historian Mike Dixon, and no, no relation. <laughs> no, no relation, no although relation. that is the most common question I get. Really, yes. really, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Okay, before we get into the background of the border, can you give us a simple overview of what it is? Sure, so, uh, Delaware used to be part of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And the problem was, going back to the colonial period, Lisa, no one knew where Pennsylvania's borders were. It was in great dispute. Like, we're sitting here in the studio this, uh, this, uh, today, and uh, Maryland said it was part of Maryland, and uh, Delaware said it was part of Delaware, and back and forth. So for the longest time, there was a lot at stake. Uh, Delaware didn't, uh, Pennsylvania claimed Delaware, Maryland claimed Delaware. Maryland claimed all the way up to north of City Hall in Philadelphia. Mm. So there's a lot at stake with this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the line was surveyed by Charles Mason and Jeremiah Dixon. Can you tell us a little bit about the gentleman? Sure. So this arguing, because there's a lot at stake, mm -hmm. uh, is Cape Henlopen in Delaware, Pennsylvania or Maryland. Uh, but the, the, they'd gone through the courts forever, and finally the king stepped in and he issued a decree. We're basically we're just going to split this thing in half. Here, here's your line for Delaware or for Pennsylvania and Maryland. It'll split the peninsula in half. And they tried local surveyors, but this was an enormous project. It involved legal wrangling in every level of court you can think of from the colonies back to England. So finally they said they'd send in the experts. And they're the two guys you mentioned. So what kind of markers were there put there so that when the explorers came by, they knew where the line was? Yeah, well, so you take these two guys that came over from England in 17, late 1763. They walked every mile of what we know today as the Maryland-Delaware border, every mile of it. Uh, inch by inch, uh, Pennsylvania, some three, almost 300 miles there. And every mile they'd put down a little stone, a surveyor stone, uh, and then every five miles they would put something called a crown stone. So if you go up to Mary, and there are a few around, mm -hmm. so every five miles, and it's got the, uh, the, uh, the royal seals on it for each of the colonies. Uh, you go up to Marydale, and they're very proud of theirs. They have theirs in a nice shelter, and there's a nice historic marker. You go to Del Mar. I mean, I mean this is a pass that's still around us today. You go to Del Mar, uh, uh, three or four miles west of town. Uh, yeah, there's a, a the, the start. They even start their work right there. Yeah, I've seen that. So the line appears in all sort of media over the years. Anything interesting come to mind? Yeah, a lot. So the, the, in fact, a couple of things. Um, um, if if there's this semblance, uh, this, re, this idea that the South begins here, there were a lot of people in media going to help it out. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, look at popular songs. You look at Yosemite Sam. Mm -hmm. He's uh, he's playing on the Mason-Dixon line, and <laughs> he's playing an old Confederate, and Bugs Bunny's running into him. So the kids in the 1950s are watching this, and it's what do you mean the war is over? We don't let you know down here. Yankees down this way, and that type of thing. The other thing that's interesting that in terms of current day situation is they would resurvey it a few times because they didn't know how accurate it was. I mean, these guys mm -hmm. are looking up at stars and calibrating. Mm -hmm. Turns out it's fairly accurate. There were a few uh, deviations, uh, but when they were doing the Delaware line, uh, they, they found a few small errors. And supposedly, according to the Philadelphia Inquirer, a lady produced her shotgun and lived in Delaware, and she came out the door, and she says, well, I don't care what your instruments say, you're not moving me into Maryland, <laughs> as, as told to us by the Philadelphia Inquirer. Oh, so, my goodness. So it, it meant a lot. It meant uh, when you took the train south, People would take note of it. It shows up in tour books and guidebooks, and it really takes on that semblance as the Civil War comes on as being the South begins here. And that's because Pennsylvania was free territory, Maryland and Delaware were not. Hmm. Mike Dixon, as always, thank you for all the knowledge you bring yeah. to the show. Thanks thank for you. having me, folks. Thank yeah. you. Absolutely.